Good morning. Welcome. We're so glad that you've joined us today. Uh, let's see, a few announcements. I want to draw your attention to your bulletin. Announcements and corrections. Uh, so like Jean announced last week, we do have our cancer prayer and support group coming back this month. So that meets this Tuesday at four o'clock and we'll meet in the Beal Room. And it's a chance to go over. Um, we have a list of folks that we've been praying for who are somewhere on their journey in uh, fighting cancer. And so we pray for people who are in treatment, who are in remission, who have just you know, found out that they're, um, they've been given a diagnosis. So we just gather and we pray for them by name. And that is open to anyone who would like to be a part of that prayer time. And then you'll notice the next thing, uh, Scott pointed out my, my typo. I think I just copied and pasted from above. So that's actually Sunday the 22nd, uh, which is a week from today. We're going to have a church work day after the fellowship hour. So we'll have our normal Sunday morning service. We'll go downstairs for coffee and uh, refreshments. And then I'm going to, uh, or we will provide a, a light lunch for anyone who wants to stay after that to help us. So we have received, we've got some new light bulbs that need to go here in the Beal Room and downstairs in the fellowship hall, those long fluorescent light bulbs. And we have some cleaning to do of the lights here in the Beal Room. So we'll get the vacuum out and do some cleaning and replace the light bulbs, as well as repaint our front stairs and ramp. Um, and so if you are available next Sunday afternoon and you'd like to be a part of that, uh, we would love to have you stick around and help us with that work day. And then of course, on the 26th, that is a Thursday. That, <laughs> it's Thursday, Sunday, Thursday. Um, the Administrative Council meets at 6.30 also in the Beal Room. And then one more announcement, our fellowship hour, it has been a real blessing to me to be able to do something that feels more normal, that it, you know, it's a time for us to sit around the table over a cup of coffee and just visit and enjoy one another's company and, and fellowship. Um, and I wanted to say we have signups um, I believe Diane is actually signed up for next Sunday uh, to bring something for fellowship hour, but then the rest of the schedule is blank after that. So if you have not yet volunteered to bring something and you would like to and are able, we would love to have you check out that sign up sheet by the door and, and pick a Sunday. And I think that's it. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Beautiful morning to see you out. Let's pray. Father, we welcome your presence with us this morning. You're a good God, a good, good God, and we, we come to worship you and turn our attention toward you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. In the beginning, you hovered over the water. silence you spoke light into darkness and there was light in the beginning we were made in your image and we were naked without shame are new, your mercies are new, new every morning, your mercies are new, your mercies are new. the word and he was gone 
on And the word was with God And he dwelt among us And there was life Oh, in the beginning The Lamb of God was broken And his blood was poured out For the sins of Mercies are new, new every morning. Your mercies are new, your mercies are new. Indeed, his mercies are new every day. We're moving uh, into our time of joys and concerns. So if anybody has any prayer requests or praises they would like to share, this is the time to do it. Dave? Yes, so I ask for prayers for Sharon's brother, Robert Farrish. <clears throat> he was just diagnosed with a brain tumor, and he's going through all the different tests and everything to see what can be taken care of. Okay, you said Robert Barrett? Robert Barrett. Barrett with a brain tumor. All right, we will lift him up in prayer for sure. Other joys or concerns? Jack? Uh, rounding out the wisers uh, is Sam this morning. Sam is a senior at the University of Cincinnati. Awesome. And, uh, he joins his sister. His sister is in the southeast corner of the church. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> awesome. Welcome. We're so glad that you have more family joining us this summer. Welcome. Yes, Linda. in that area. Oh my goodness. My goodness. We will pray for her. Yes. Other joys or concerns? No? All right. Then let us go to God in prayer. Gracious God, your word says that those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. And so we come before you this morning with uh, that hope and that promise on our hearts and minds as we seek you, as we, as we gather to praise you, to worship you, uh, to be transformed by you, by your spirit. God, the rest of that psalm says, we desire life, we covet many days to enjoy good. And so God, help us to depart from evil, help us to do good, help us to seek peace and pursue it. 
with our very lives, with all that we say and do, all that we think, all that we are. Help us to pursue your truth, to be agents of peace and love and mercy and grace and forgiveness. God, we gather and we approach your, th your throne with boldness so that we can receive all of that in order to turn around and give it to one another. To truly love our neighbors, to extend grace and forgiveness. To be people of integrity and to look more and more like your son, Jesus. Today, we're so thankful to be able to gather in this place to look around and see uh, so many familiar faces, uh, friends that both live here year round and, and of course our, our friends that we get to enjoy during the summer months. We give you thanks for uh, friends and family having visited us in this place and um, for those who have gotten to enjoy the beauty of this region, uh, the lake and the mountains and the trees. For time spent out on the lake with loved ones and friends, whether fishing or just going for a boat ride. God, we are so blessed um, to get to enjoy your creation in this very special way. And so again, we give you thanks for all of our, our company, our visitors, again, friends and family who have come uh, throughout these last several months to, to enjoy this place alongside us. God, we continue to pray for those on our prayer list, uh, those needs uh, that, that range, you know, cover a variety of, of circumstances, of um, upcoming surgeries and procedures uh, for healing. And God, we also want to lift up Sharon's brother, Robert, with his recent diagnosis. We pray for for peace and comfort as he navigates this new journey, as he begins the process of, um, of dealing with this brain tumor. We pray for his family, for the doctors and nurses that will attend to him. We ask that you give them wisdom and strength and courage. And God, we also lift up Bonnie as she awaits an appointment with the doctor to see about her foot. God, we pray for her pain, that it would subside and that, um, that she would heal completely and fully from this injury. And we know that there are many other situations, many other names, um, many other needs, both in this congregation, in this community, and not to mention across the world. People who need you, who need to feel your presence, who need to know that they are not alone, that no matter what they can see with their eyes, no matter what is going on around them, God, I just pray that that they would know that you are with them no matter what. That you are good, that you are sovereign, and that you are working all things together for the good of those who love you. God, for this day, our time together, I ask that you would fill us with your spirit those who are gathered here in this sanctuary on this day, and also our friends and loved ones who will gather with us online in a virtual format. I ask that wherever your people are found, that you would also be there, that you would be in them and among them. Again, that you would 
um, transform us by the power of your spirit from the inside out so that our, our every moment, our very lives would reflect you and your glory. Be with us as we read your word. And again, as we, as we seek and search for you, I just ask that you would meet us in this place. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, and the one who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from Proverbs 9, verses 1 through 6. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servant girls. She calls from the highest places in the town. You that are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. A second reading comes from Ephesians 5, verses 15 through 20. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. Do not, so do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen amen our gospel reading this morning is from the book of john chapter 6 verses 51 through 58 I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, "How can this man give us his flesh to eat?" So Jesus said to them, "Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you." Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever." This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Once again, welcome to our worship service today on this 12th Sunday after Pentecost. And we're so glad that you have joined us. Um, I and wouldn't know if I was going to say anything, but yesterday I, I volunteered to babysit for some friends of ours. And so I spent eight hours with a two-year-old and a nine-month-old. So I'm a little tired this morning. Those of you that have had children that close together, I applaud you. <laughs> you deserve a medal for having little ones in diapers and it's, yeah, having to, the nine month old didn't really want to not be held. So 
I had to just stick him in the playpen and know he was going to scream until I took care of his sister and then could come back and told Scott, I'm, I think I have muscles now because I <laughs> held quite large nine month old for, for most of the day. But anyway, so I'm a little tired, I'm a little stiff, but I'm here. We're, we're good. <laughs> so yeah, I'm so glad that you've joined us today. And we are going back to uh, looking at the Ephesians passage this week and, and sticking with that theme of, of what does it mean for us to be new creations in Christ, right? What does it mean for us to have a new identity in, in Jesus? And so we're in chapter five. Um, and, and it's this idea that, that Christians, those who claim Christ or proclaim Christ, uh, which includes you and I, you know, gathered here in this space, that Christians are no longer who they once were, right? That you and I are no longer who we once were uh, before we came to know Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And I don't know about you, but I think that's good news, right? That we are no longer who we once were, that we get to be Uh, different and new, and again, look more and more like Jesus as we go along this journey together. In the section that we're in, uh, which includes Ephesians 4, 5, and 6, it builds on this identity foundation, or, you know, having our foundation um, in our identity in Christ and building upon that. And so the idea is that Christians, that we put off our old self, right, and, and our old self's way of living and doing um, and being in the world, and we put on the conduct of our new self, as it says in Ephesians 4, to 24. And so in this way, Christian living entails walking in the light of our new reality and, and ceasing to walk in the dark of our old reality or our old self, And so this short text that we have today from Ephesians 5 um, and the surrounding context, the the verses before and after it, remind us that wise living is personal, but it's never private, right? That when we choose to live as people redeemed by God, that's a personal journey. It's a personal choice. And um, I can't walk your journey for you and you can't walk your journey for me, but it's never a private um, journey. It's never a a private choice because if we proclaim Christ and therefore are new creations and have a new identity and are not uh, the person, you know, that we were before, then that should affect how we treat one another, right? It should affect how we live, the decisions we make, Um, the words that come out of our mouths, all of those things should be different. And therefore it cannot be private because um, we are, we are saved and redeemed um, to, to live and interact with each other, but also for each other. Um, I think a lot about, um, you know, Cain and Abel and and the question, am I my brother's keeper? Um, And I think you know, even now today, we may ask that question, we may wonder, and we may want the answer to be no, you know, whatever they're doing over there has nothing to do with me. And and I'm over here in in my lane, right? Scott likes to say, stay in your lane, (laughs) stay in your lane, bro, right? But as Christians, we are more responsible for each other than that, right? Um, We're responsible for one another's, um, you know, joys and hopes and um, and needs and concerns, right? It's why we, uh, we share joys and concerns at the beginning of our time together. It's why we have a prayer list. It's why, um, we follow up with one another. And, um, it's, it's why it's what compels us to, to gather on a regular basis, to be in community and to be in relationship. Because the truth is once we are part of the body, the body of Christ, um, we are more responsible for one another than we realize, than we think. And so we, again, have been created anew by God, but this new self does not live in isolation. Um, again, we live both with and for one another. And similarly, this new self is uh, created, is um, you know, part of this journey is 
is that we are active in doing good works. Like it says in Ephesians 2.10, for we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. So we're created anew to do good works and to not be dormant um, or secluded or isolated. And so this idea of wise Christian living, um, it's not merely relegated to our time here on a Sunday morning, right? The fact that we, that we come to church on Sunday and it's not relegated to our personal devotional time at home, the time that we read our Bibles and have our own study, our own personal study and devotional time. But living wisely means allowing the spirit to work in us, right? To work out the will of Jesus Christ in all aspects of life so that who we are as Christians is integral to how we live as Christians, right? So we're talking about seeing the fruit of, of our salvation, the fruit of our redemption is that um, the fact that we are different means that we live differently. And all of this brings, back, brings us back to the opening line of this passage from Ephesians 5. It says, be careful then how you live. And when I was reading some, um, some what other people have to say, uh, some commentaries about this section, uh, a few people were saying, you know, it might be more helpful to, to kind of put a more positive um, spin on that instead of thinking of it as a warning, as a, you know, be careful sounds like a warning, right? More of um, an encouragement, a very a very loud, very robust encouragement uh, to think of it this way as pay really close attention to how to live, right? And so be alert, be aware, uh, because it matters, because this is, this is the one life on this earth that we've been given uh, to make a difference in the world around us, to, to be a part of what God is doing in the world, to be a part of bringing about his kingdom, right, on earth, as it is in heaven, that we pray week in and week out. And so this short passage offers us some, again, serious and and robust encouragement for for living spirit-filled lives in Christ. Um, And also this short passage, these few verses, is summed up with a command to give thanks to God the Father at all times, right? And that, kind of like the question asking, well, am I my brother's keeper and wanting a certain answer uh, most of the time? Um, you know, giving thanks in all circumstances. I mean, how many of us would say that's easy to do? Yeah, right, no hands go up, nobody. <laughs> Lots of knowing chuckles, right, laughs, because we know that it's difficult. We know that it's difficult in spite of life circumstances to give thanks at all times. Um, but again, as, as we prayed, um, you know, when we, when we look at, at the, the list of names, of situations, of people that we're praying for, and, and part of my prayer, and I know that you hear it week in and week out, is that, is that people will just know that in spite of what they can see with their eyes, in spite of what they know, in spite of whatever life has thrown at them, to know that, that God is with them, even in that moment. And so as part of our new identity in Christ, as Christians, as people who are trying to emulate him, to be like him, we are called to give thanks in all circumstances. I had a conversation with Don a couple of weeks ago, uh, and we were talking about the reality of the seasons up here in Maine and just how different uh, the seasons are from, from most other places. Uh, And before Don and Jennifer experienced their first November here in Greenville, Jennifer was very excited to celebrate Thanksgiving because the fall colors would just be so beautiful up here and vibrant and just a wonderful backdrop for Thanksgiving dinner, right? And she had to learn, as did Scott and I, that by the time Thanksgiving rolls around up here, it's looking more like a winter wonderland outside, right? And um, our, Scott and I, our first Thanksgiving here in 2018, I think they had like record cold. It was kind of a, I mean, it, it, the, wind, the wind chill was crazy and it just, 
it did not, you know, that warm and fuzzy and, and like the orange and red and yellow colors and all of that, it, it, it had a totally different feel, right, than what we were expecting. Um, and so, so those of us who are not from here, did not grow up here, we had to adjust uh, the length of the seasons, right, and kind of shift everything, everything forward. Um, so, so we think about Thanksgiving and that season of, of giving thanks and um, what it looks like, what it means. I think as Christians, we have to remember whether there are, you know, leaves, uh, the leaves are changing or they're on the ground or we've got however many inches or feet of snow, uh, or whether we're in the middle of our two weeks of summer in August, right, where we've got the heat and the humidity, um, we can and we should give thanks to God, right, in all circumstances, in all seasons. Um, I say a lot, you know, that we're Easter people, right? I, I say that a lot during the season of Easter uh, leading up to Pentecost. And the same thing is true that we can say we are Thanksgiving people. That is who we are, are called to be and who we should be as people of God uh, to give thanks in all circumstances. And so this passage serves to remind us that gratitude isn't confined to a season or a month or a day, a holiday, and here in August, as in many parts of the world, um, our gardens are in full swing, right? Whether we have flower gardens or vegetable gardens. Kim, are you drowning in zucchini? No, not this year? Oh no, not this year. In years past, I've seen it though. You've got a baker's rack on your porch that's just got this, the loads of zucchini. And it's funny, I saw a post on Facebook yesterday, um, one of the many um, nursery gardens that I follow on Facebook. They shared an image and it said, it's important to lock your car doors, especially now your friends and neighbors and even strangers will put free zucchini in your car, right? And so, so if, you, if you did get a good crop in this year, I mean, when it's good, it's good, right? And, and you're just, it's coming out of your ears. You don't know, you can't make enough zucchini bread, right? With all the zucchini that you get. Uh, so even, so this time of, of looking at our gardens, our flowers, our, you know, our yards and the abundance that we have and the beauty that we have, um, it maybe can be easier at a time like that to give thanks, right? To give thanks for a harvest or um, something that is plentiful. But the at times, those, those three little words part of the text remind us that um, it's about finding blessings and giving thanks every day in every moment. Um, regardless of what's going on in the world around us. And so, um, you know, one of the, the keys for all of this, and I've mentioned it already, is, is the fact that, that we are transformed by God's spirit. Um, and I had a conversation this week with some friends about the fact that I think we forget that transformation means that there's a change, Right? And so it goes back to not being our old self, but living into the new self. That every time we ask God to, to fill us with his spirit, to change us, to transform us, then, then it, it would seem that change would follow that, right? That he would say, okay, and, and let's, so let's work on some things, right? Let's work on that old nature. Let's look at um, the person of Jesus and the way that he lived and treated people and what he cared about. And then we start, um, or we continue rather, that journey of transformation. And so, um, so be careful how you live, right? Or pay attention, pay close, close attention to how you live. Pay attention to the world around you. Let your life bear witness to your faith, right? Let what you do bear witness to what you believe, be filled with the spirit and give thanks to God. And so this idea of gratitude and this gratitude toward God that we've been talking about, um, I think it's also important to remember that it's, it's a good way to live with one another with gratitude, right? Because of our overwhelming gratitude toward God and all that he has done, all that he's blessed us with, all that he's given us, all that he's doing in the world, we can also begin to better appreciate one another. We can um, 
we can give thanks uh, to God and then we can give thanks to one another as we, as we journey alongside one another, right? And it's that gratitude um, that kind of bolsters the life of faith, right? It's that gratitude that drives stewardship, right? That drives our giving to the church, our giving back to God and giving to one another. It drives mission, it's that gratitude that bolsters our faith, that brings us through the doors of the church week after week. Um, gratitude is what uh, inspires us to have that personal time of devotion I mentioned earlier, that drives us to open the Bible, that drives us to read about God and his plan for, for all of humanity. Um, it's gratitude that motivates our witness, our telling of our story, our telling others about uh, this God that has done so much for us, that has changed and, and transformed our lives. So this idea of giving thanks at all times and for everything um, is really a powerful way to live that affects all areas of our lives and, and everyone that we come into contact with. And so my hope and my prayer is that we would take these, these five little verses in Ephesians chapter 5 um, and that that would be our, our life song, our heart song, that we would want to be um, people who, who care, who, who care about others, who care about the way that we live, and people who, who learn to be joyful in all things and to give thanks in all things. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would help us, help us to move around this world that you have created with care, Help us to, to have eyes to see, to pay attention to the ways that we uh, proclaim you as Lord, and also the ways that, that we don't. God, help us to identify um, those thoughts and attitudes and um, words and actions, those things that, that do not reflect you and your glory, that do not reflect the love that you have for this world. God, we want to be more like your son in all that we do. We want to be transformed by your spirit into new creations. And so, God, we ask that you give us strength and courage for this journey. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.